आई वी एम दिस इज ऑडियो ज्ञान एंड आई एम योर होस्ट केदार निमकर वेलकम टू अ डीप डाइव इन टू द माइंड ऑफ ल्यूमिनरीज फ्रॉम द इंडियन क्रिएटिव वर्ल्ड वेलकम टू अ ब्रांड न्यू सीरीज ऑफ ऑडियो ज्ञान इट्स बीन क्वाइट सम टाइम द न्यू सीरीज इज कॉल्ड वेर आर द डिजाइनर्स It's a 12-part series featuring few of the top influential design leaders talking about their hiring process, challenges in finding and retaining talent and some tips for young designers who make a cut after they apply. I'm so happy and proud to introduce my co-host for this series, Abhineet Tiwari. Uh he was actually heading the design at Gojek uh, but uh, surprisingly likes to call himself like designer at Gojek. So welcome Abhineet welcome to the show it's actually the other way around you can also welcome me because you will be co-hosting this series hey getar thanks for having me here and yeah yes super excited about this series i i i really saw the list of uh, people you managed to line up for the series yeah and yeah i'm super excited about talking to these people specifically about design hiring because that's an evergreen <laughs> topic Yeah. I'm looking forward to having these conversations and learning something uh, from each of our guests. Same, same, yeah. In fact, uh, for to begin the series, um, uh, we have requested Jay Datta to join us. Uh, Jay Datta uh, is heading the design at Make My Trip and Go Ibibo. He is also the co-founder of Design Up, uh, one of the most sought-after design conferences in Southeast Asia. And uh, I think uh, I had interviewed him uh, in episode number eighty. where we spoke about role of uh, design in startups uh, so it was quite a uh, one should go and listen to that episode also so yeah without uh, further delay um, yeah welcome jay welcome back jay actually to audio gan hey thanks so much uh, kedar and thanks so much abhinit for having me here once again it's always a pleasure to be back on audio gan so thank you so much yeah yeah it's it's our honor all together Uh, so yaar wahi hai ki matlab i have been chatting with um, abhinit about this series uh, where are the designers and just wanted to uh, pick brains of few of the designers and and understand what are their challenges because i have been hiring for quite some time and uh, it's kind of difficult to hire mid level senior folks across the board actually right and uh, i probably would have a different mindset because i come from clear trip then book my show and there's a different kind of pedigree to different companies so i just thought to do this series and get a wider perspective of are the challenges same how are you handling it uh, how, how do you spot the talent and stuff like that so yeah i mean that's that's uh, anything to add abhinit you have any particular take no i'm just looking forward to uh, hearing from jay what he's been doing uh, about hiring designers and all the companies that he's been at who's going to kick it off kedar you or me uh i'll i'll take the first question and then maybe you sure. can chime along sure so jay like uh, there are a bunch of questions a few of them i actually it's not a rapid fire round but uh, we'll we'll have like few of them a uh, really quick and short ones so just sort of rapid fire but yeah you can just take your time as well and then there are like few questions which are much more uh, in depth and we can deep dive into uh, what's the process like and stuff so just to start off how long uh, you have been in design and and if you can give us quick background about you uh, when did you start hiring who was the first person whom you hired if you remember where was it and yeah any any insights from there right i think i've been in design fairly long um like i guess uh, maybe similar to abhinit and you or maybe a little longer i was actually trying to remember as you are framing the question how long have i been hiring i think it goes back to 1998 or 99 <clears throat> this is while i was um, pretty much an independent charge of a growing team in mauritius and one of my um, i can't remember who was the first hire i think i might have contributed to some folks um, but one of the interesting assignments i do remember was hiring my replacement so i had replaced this french designer from paris and um, i had shortlisted this wonderful designer who worked for the grand canyon national parks 
I mean, uh, it finally never happened. I mean, uh, but she and I have remained friends, but we have never met. Hopefully after the pandemic, who knows? Okay. Uh, so Jay, yeah, I was 12 years old then. So you've definitely been in design day long. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, even I think I was in 10th maybe. I don't know. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, not to make you feel old, but following on from the hiring conversation, let's talk about sourcing first. Like, um, that's the title of our series as well. Where are the designers? So, how does it work for you currently where you're at or even in the past? Like, does the HR uh, help you do all the sourcing? Do they have a pool of designers or do you take charge of it yourself or your design team does? So I think um, HR owns the process and we essentially help them add, maintain, expand and refine the pool. I tend to think of hiring process as a product flow. The pool is really the mouth of the funnel and from there, the bunch of steps. I guess we may not be very different in the way we do that. I think the first step really is shortlisting candidates based on CV, portfolio, referrals or, or chat. The second step is the assignment. And the third is, of course, a couple of panel rounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Post-discussion with the members of the panel, I think the last round is usually with me, unless the person is a very, very senior person, in which case it might be with some of my peers in uh, product or tech. Sure. Okay. I just wanted to check in on one more thing, which is uh, what, how important are referrals for you for sourcing? Right. I've seen people have different kind of a take on this. Some people love it. Some people find referrals um, problematic for some reason. What's your take on referrals? How big a part is it? Right. Your hiring Nothing. Process? Referrals are still fairly effective, though you need to handle referrals um, a little more sensitively. I think that's the problem part also, because... Um, These are people that are known to people inside your organization. So you should not mess up that relationship per se. But I think um, going back to referrals is that people don't buy things, they buy into people. And then um, they essentially buy into promises and words and beliefs. And this is what I think referrals are all about. It's a human chain of trust. So I think, yeah, it still works. That's an interesting bit. Uh, Human chain of trust. (laughs) Kida? Yeah. And I mean, you briefly covered what is the typical hiring process, but uh, has it changed over time? I mean, um, since the time when you started hiring and because we have different tests, right? And and we keep refining them for different levels. And sometimes uh, the company culture also lends itself to how you hire. So have you seen any change in your design hiring process? I think broadly the process remains the same, but I think there's a lot of uh, fine tuning and attention to details um, and and lots of small parts which we have fine tuned or which I have fine tuned. I mean, when I first started hiring, so this was my second job and I started, I think, managing hiring things pretty early in my career. So, So obviously I made my set of mistakes and stupid things as well. But um, again, using the product flow analogy, I think what we have done over a period of time, and this is again, a lot of learning at Adobe and um, again, at Make My Trip as well, which is paying a lot of attention to the pool. I mean, and paying a lot of attention to the rejections and all the steps. I think what's happening? Why are we rejecting less or more somewhere? And what should the ratio be? So we also very openly discuss and introspect about bias. We train a lot of younger people to interview. So a lot of younger people shadow the older members such. Uh, Also because I think that also brings an interesting diversity to the the hiring panel as well. The other part is um, a few key panel members, and this is happening more at Make My Trip, is that they own the journey of a candidate across various stages. So if there are four or five uh, key people, they would probably own four or five candidates. So roughly at any point of time, there are about 20 people who are kind of uh, looked after very well. So we actually have a lot of openings and design leaders across verticals and across two brands. But I think one of the things that we have mandated is that at the start, we are thinking of a common pool and really evaluating the fit as we go along. The saying we have is this, that, you know, you plant a tree whose fruits or shade you may not enjoy, but eventually you'll grow the forest. 
And uh, the other part, of course, is that sometimes people will move from jump from a vertical to the other. So I think if you're hiring good people, if you're hiring the right people, I think it's it's you're investing somewhere down the line as well. The last point, of course, is our assignments have become much more modularized. So they've become much more smaller, shorter, sharper, very varied. And I think it's the kind of thing even I would have fun taking. So I think that's what we have done a lot of tweaking along the way. Mm-hmm. Actually, just to deep dive a bit into this, that uh, you have, you must have like, everyone must have seen those LinkedIn posts where young, fresh candidates uh, or sometimes even experienced ones say that, either you pay us for the assignment or then whatever, like those sort of reactions are there, right? And sometimes there's also controversial topic about whether the test should be from the same domain or like a neutral domain. Uh, Any insights there? Yeah, I think, um, so we have discussed this quite a lot. And again, some of my colleagues in Adobe days also we discussed this, but I think it's always good, especially, I mean, of course, there are very senior folks and, and uh, sometimes you cannot give them tests. So the test won't really, really check them out. And there are other ways. I think the whole idea of testing or evaluating may not necessarily be an assignment. So I think I, I agree on that part. However, the interesting part here is that I don't believe that you should um, give a test from the same domain. Uh, we have increasingly veered away into something very creative, very different sort of thing. Like, for example, designing for a music shop or a magic shop or anything different. And part of it is really about the assignment is not the assignment necessarily, but how you actually are kind of going through the entire process. I mean, what do you talk about with the designers uh, when you actually meet and you say you cannot do the process or how do you actually negotiate all of these kind of touch points with the HR, with the person? So I think that says a lot about the person as well. So I think I would still stick to the assignment, maybe smaller because I'm very, very conscious that people don't have much time. So can we actually say that this assignment can be done in two hours? That's the max that you should be taking or three hours or four hours, but it shouldn't be a big piece which takes you like two weekends. And I think that's wrong, actually. Mm, Quite interesting. Um, Jay, I want to talk a bit about something you mentioned in passing, which is uh, diversity in design teams. So if you, and I don't think this is just a design issue. Tech industry overall, especially in India, if you look at that uh, from a distance, it's mostly dudes, uh, mostly from big towns and have had an English-based education. Um, how do you uh, maintain diversity in the teams? Is it a conscious effort or do you find the right balance of talent organically? Right. I think diversity has been something very much on our agenda. And I think it's something very much of a very conscious effort, I would say. In the last year, I think we roughly hired some 55 people. Um, I think some 41 new positions, uh, which is actually quite a lot. In the design team. The design team wow. entirely. Wow. So it's like a big jump uh, for us. Uh, but a lot of them were, of course, some were replacements, some were um, interns, et cetera, et cetera. So I would kind of contractors and a whole lot of them. And uh, interestingly, 41% of these were women. And the way we do it is not really setting any institutional targets. I think if you have to have a sustainable change, then there are a couple of process tweaks that essentially need to be done. So Like in every panel, uh, we at least have one woman, and I think maybe more in in many cases. Uh, We increasingly have a lot of more women managers and senior folks in the team itself. And um, many of them will have a veto in the entire interview process. So I have uh, greatly come to trust their intuition, skill, and judgment. And I think what the core hiring team shares is, is that it's about diversity, really, across gender across locations, so not necessarily all metro folks, but, um, and we have actually very interestingly people from Indore and Nagpur and Coimbatore and uh, all sorts of places and places that you might not even have heard about, um, different schools, people who are familiar with certain languages more and for them English, um, maybe a little bit of struggle, which is perfectly okay. Uh, we also make sure that they are kind of, we have a good balance between people who are design trained versus non-trained. So I think we do look at it overall and just want to make sure that it's not, that you don't really end up with a whole bunch of very similar people, like people 
urban people, let's say from certain schools, etc. So it's a it's a good mix that we try and shuffle. So that's that's what we do typically. Wow, that that sounds very nice. idealistic and romantic. Actually, I don't know, Jay, like because it's make my trip or whether I am living in a different bubble altogether. Because I think it will be interesting journey as we go along doing these interviews because. Um, right from like the chaotic startup world where the hr doesn't know how many people i need to like a more organized setup um, like make my trip is going to be an interesting ride but um, you you mentioned about interns also right so like how feasible it is to have internship i mean it's very required but due to sometimes due to like timelines and pressures you really don't get time to mentor or give them assignments uh, make sure they have a good case study to put up in their college and then probably the next job which they land up in or probably continue in the same company so internships uh, how does that work at least at make my trip and and if you have any other examples sure and i think uh, just to add to that last question and my response actually i think these are a lot of these are actually learned the hard way because they were in couple of earlier ones where i didn't think we paid a lot of attention not to, to the gender diversity but the diversity of design trained versus non design trained people from kind of urban versus non urban areas etc and i think increasingly we need to reflect the same diversity which our users have and i think i've learned it the hard way so maybe mm-hmm. 10 years ago i wouldn't have thought about it but i've kind of made my own set of mistakes and and learned it the hard way so i think this is probably a good place where i am i'm kind of thinking much more structurally uh, as opposed to kind of repeating any of those past mistakes uh, and 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 sorry to interrupt but and just to add and no. tell every listener uh, that when i was thinking of this series uh, it was jay who told me that you should have like a, again like a equal contribution of uh, women design leaders in the industry also so it is not a conscious thing that you slip but it's it's just a pattern that you observe you hang out with those people and then it it just because part of your your system right so you have to take those conscious efforts sometimes to address these sort of uh, important issues right so yeah thanks thanks jay for that but yeah go ahead no absolutely i think yeah and i think sometimes you don't willfully make those slips it just happens yeah. so i think yeah absolutely so coming back to internships i mean we have always supported internships but 2020 was a very hard time i mean suddenly our work pressure went up uh, because we were trying a lot of new things uh, we had this remote scenario mm-hmm. and um, so we just realized we couldn't do it but in 2021 we devised a program to specifically address interns called early check in mm-hmm. and um, we are also very interested in gearing up for interns and in design up so we have just been talking to a few folks um especially since a lot of internship programs have been disrupted i think this is the least we can do for this folks and i think it will be a drop in the ocean but yeah in little ways we can try and do things sure so this one is like a more leading yes or no type question so what's what's like a deal breaker for you attitude or aptitude attitude okay okay <laughs> now i'll 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 come to yeah i'll come to this question much more deeper uh, in the following up but yeah this was just a quick warm up kind of a thing that reminds me of that quote from a manchester united manager who said i'd rather have a hole in my squad than have an asshole in my squad right. <laughs> i i don't know if profanities allowed bilkul, in bilkul. the podcast bindas no problem <laughs> it'll do a beep anyway kind of a <laughs> big beep <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, jay i wanted to know is there such a thing as uh, jay's favorite interview question So I actually have a collection of questions which I have over a period of time I keep shuffling and asking people. But one of the questions I like and and I mean people might get is that would you rather be the best player on a losing team or the worst player on a winning team? Wow, <laughs> that's quite interesting. <laughs> So I have a bunch of questions like these, which I kind of rotate, and I mean there are five, six of them, including um, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and and so, and what's the thought process? Is it just to understand the vibe, or is it all like what all do you quickly try and gauge from, like how fast the response comes, or in any other pa- like parameters that you gauge with? So I think it's not. I do tell them that it's not about the speed part of it, but think. And I think it's just understand how people think. Mm. And 
you, I mean, I, I really appreciate people who think very differently from me because um, I wouldn't have thought it this way. This is pretty interesting. So I have a bunch of questions like these, which would make them think. So it's not a standard interview question, but it also makes me think and it makes me think what would I have actually said in this one? And this is like, wow, I mean, this guy's actually said a very interesting thing. I would have never thought about it. I think it's not about the answer, but how do you even think about the answer? Or how do you even structure the answer? Interesting. Nice. <laughs> cool. So we'll move on to the next section. Yeah, I sure. Guess, Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jay, this is uh, a pretty cliche question, but we have to ask it. Um, what are some top qualities? Um, if you need a number, then just three. Um, that you look for in a designer when you're hiring them. Right. I think this is reminds me of Keda's earlier question as well. So I would have really liked to say attitude, mm-hmm. attitude, attitude. And it definitely makes a good headline, but that's not necessarily the whole truth. So the top three, since you said three, um, really are, of course, attitude, because it's the approach to work, the work ethic, the willingness to apply yourself, the willingness to work with others to get things done. And sometimes you disagree, but you say, okay, I'll disagree and agree and we'll get it done anyway, kind of, and we'll check it out, kind of. So I think a lot of that is very, very important. The second, actually, which actually it could be very well my first as well is curiosity. And I think um, that I feel is what makes you go far when you learn, change, reinvent, thanks to curiosity. And in some ways, those questions I was talking about is also about curiosity. I mean, how do you see things from a different angle? Not necessarily right or wrong, but different. That's probably the whole thing. Uh, The third for me is perseverance. And I think this, the good ones are the ones who really are patient, persevering, persistent. They're the guys who are super dogged, unwilling to give up a good fight and will continue for years at certain things. And and, um, in in some ways, design is also like research. Or if you think about sciences, I think people go on, they go deeper and deeper. So I think perseverance also kind of demands that you work with teams, stakeholders or data I mean, to get things to a conclusion or to get things moving. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think just suddenly I realized, and let, let me add a bonus fourth. I spoke about two common strands out here, which is teamwork. And I think um, I feel the age of individual superheroes is kind of getting over. So when we were growing up and we were like getting into design, I mean, we were surrounded by superheroes that one man show. But I think today, that's not really true. I mean, you have design leaders and and lots of individual kind of stars. But I think collectively, including product, tech, data and business, that's where we are like the Avengers. Um, Individually, we may not be as effective because we build big things. That's the other part of it. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Um, And if I may add to that, um, given that these are the top four things you're looking for, how do you feel about the state of talent um, that we have in the industry right now? Like, uh, what would you say a success rate is in finding these uh, four traits that you mentioned in the candidates that you talk to these days? So I think um, I would say it's gotten better. Uh, we have, I think, ups and downs where we will see certain... So I think, okay, let me just put it the other way around, and which is an advantage that mm-hmm. we have today. And I think, Avinit, you might have it. Um, I'm not sure if that is the case with Kedar. Uh, but when you are part of a very large design org, you are probably able to get a few people who will have a promise of some of these. They may not be there yet. But because you have a large team, you know that you could take a bet on some of these people and and groom them and and just get them ready. So in that sense, um, I feel I'm in a good place. Are we getting people like this? Are we getting people with all the four traits? Uh, The answer would be no. But at the same time, if you sift through things, if you kind of actually kind of look around and, and go deeper, then you will probably be able to find quite a few decent people. I mean, actually, in my recent, um, through the pandemic, uh, we had a fairly big hiring drive. And I'm I'm pleasantly surprised, actually, in the last, especially last three to four months, I guess we applied ourselves super hard to find those people. We kind of worked closely with HR. So I'm actually very optimistic. I'm, I'm seeing some good people out there. 
Hey, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On the Edge of the Sledges Cricket Podcast, in the first half, Ashwin is joined by Varun to wrap India's ODI tour of Sri Lanka. In the second half, DJ joins the party to discuss the first T20 international between India and Sri Lanka. If you'd like to hear more about this match, former Indian cricketer Sabha Karim joins Rajiv Mishra on Khel Niti and they talk some more about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're really excited to announce a new show, a show about crypto with Rohan Joshi. He's going to dive deep and demystify all the crypto stuff that we've been hearing about. And let me tell you a little bit more about stuff that's going on on the network really quickly. Congratulations to Maru Kinaya to celebrate 50 episodes of The Note with a discussion on health as a fundamental right. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam talks to Harsha Chetanwala of MyWealthGrow.com. Sarina Punawala is starting a new miniseries on emotional intelligence. Do check out the kickoff episode on the Empowering series. And Simplified talks about semiconductors. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any other show for that matter, please do tell a friend. That's really helpful for us. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. They make this all possible. Thank you very much. Siet, Cred, Global Victoria, Bank of Baroda, Intuit India, Lenovo, and Coinswitch Kuber. We really appreciate your support. Okay, uh, welcome back to the show. Jay, so actually I like wanted to interject for this question particularly is that one of the reasons why I also thought of this series was uh, a lot of times what happens is while hiring talent, we have these good soft keywords which helps uh, in building a great culture, a great team and thereby bringing a great output. But a lot of times it also happens that you don't find the right skill set also. Right? I mean, I've been doing some small workshops here and there in especially three, three towns of and design school like Ujjain mein kuch hai. And there are a bunch of uh, places where I talk and these people are really passionate, may have those skills which you spoke about, perseverance and good attitude, but they may lack basic skills of how to write a resume or how to put out a case study with a good framework. So that the potential recruiter just likes it, right? So I'm. What you spoke about was more of the soft skills. Are there any hard skills which you are like sort of deal breaker for you, or you think uh, it's mandatory at this level, right? You can pick any level because I'm sure you must be hiring directly at a very senior level and not uh, probably like a junior designer. But are there any hard skills that you look for? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Kedar. And actually, we do hire quite a bit of uh, a mix of people. And increasingly, we have been uh, hiring more recently some of the younger folks. And definitely, I think um, what I look for is, and also because talking about a big team, also which means that we are now looking for specialist skills. So for example, someone who's good with motion graphics or someone who's just good with illustrations, they may not necessarily be great with articulating in English, pretty much like what you said, Kedar. We actually hired someone like that. And I've actually, I was if we had just kind of purely seen his resume, it wasn't great. But I think we did have a quick conversation with him, which led to someone saying, okay, let's, let's dig down a little more and more. And we realized, God, this guy is like really talented. And it's just that he's been out there. This guy has not got a full-time job. So he's been working pretty much like intern from a company to company. So I think I do believe in giving breaks to people like that. And I think I remember one guy came from a back of beyond town in I think Sundarbans. Uh, this is during my Adobe time. And uh, this guy couldn't write English properly. He could not speak English, that is for sure. He could not speak good Hindi also. But we had a conversation with him and he was super talented. And um, this guy, we offered him a contract role because Adobe was not willing to bend and give him a full-time offer because he didn't have all those um, degrees and things of like that. But he has eventually moved on to Samsung and then um, a very good role with Philips today. So... Wow. Still in contact, he's still a volunteer for Design Up, keeps coming. But it's so wonderful to see people like them grow and just, just looking for a foothold, an opportunity, and they will grow absolutely. Wow, that's quite interesting and, and inspiring to hear that story. So what would you say are sort of the bigger challenges? I mean, if you, just to put a number, you can start with two, like two big challenges um, today while hiring designers and why? And 
to follow that question is also about which the conversation which we ha- keep ha- having offline about whether we should go to these schools as mentors or do alumni play a part in it and so that is where it's leading to but we can start off by you telling us uh, like two biggest challenges which you face while hiring designers right i think again interesting question and and um, when i think about hiring and and also what happens is that now increasingly i'm looking more at the cultural fit the will this person be around for some time uh will the person settle in um contribute etc so i think in some ways good hiring is like making a good bet a bet that this person will enjoy the role grow contribute and happy and I mean in a sense it's a win win bet what the team the earlier panel do check in is more to do with the skills the hard skills the detailing etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think the assignment to some extent tests that as well so when i look back at it i think this year when this last one year we've met 55 offers or you could say 55 bets mm-hmm. out of these two were wrong i think we made two wrong bets again from a proportionate point of view that's like roughly what some 3 to 4 percent times we were wrong out of 100 so which is not bad mm. the real challenge i feel is that most hiring processes are geared to judge your past i mean you know this this mutual fund literature right that past performance is no guarantee of future whatever mm-hmm. performance or growth or whatever kind of thing it's a bit like that it's trying to sort of look at those dots in the past and trying to sort of extrapolate them and say how will this actually play out overall this i find is a very big challenge i mean skill is okay i mean what if your skill is really good but you stagnate and you don't pick up anything new so you could just be in the same place for three years or four years for all we know so i think this for me is the top 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 notch challenge how do i envision extrapolate this person's growth and i think that person also has to be happy growing within our organization i think both both parts really kind of thing so the refinement and learning really is in the area of evaluation and bias i mean am i biased in or is the team biased in looking at extrapolation or the evaluation that's where i think we need to look much more deeply at some of those things and just kind of not be biased by anything so one very interesting example i mean two examples actually was that in the middle of this all this remote hiring there were two instances where um this whole technology played truant i think one person was in a very small town in up nothing the net got kept getting disconnected i couldn't hear her i think she got nervous she couldn't hear me so we said you know if i carry on like this this will definitely bias my view of this whole conversation so let's stop it once you are ready and once you feel that things are set or if you want to go somewhere else take this let us know we will will hold off i mean let's there's no pressure right now for that and we did this again and i think it went really well so i think those are the simple things where we need to be much more thoughtful and, and kind of just make sure that we we are not giving any chance for biases to be introduced because we might make a very wrong bet as well mm. interesting so interesting jay uh, p- taking on from what you mentioned earlier right um you've been you said you've been hiring since 98 now all of us here know that design has gone through a sea change uh, in the last two decades or so i wonder have you seen any changes in the aspirations of uh, designers in india as well like now we have so many unicorns uh so many companies looking for talent so if you could talk about like do you see the aspirations changing a bit maybe from just getting an opportunity to now something more yeah i think aspirations have changed a lot a lot i mean when i stepped out of design school to today i think there's been so much change i mean i went back to school again but not a design school i i did a cross school management plus design that was in the uk <laughs> but i think the aspiration in some ways was much more socialist um, like two decades plus ago uh, the two things would probably be the mastery of what you do and designing for something you deeply care about mm. i think this is where probably what uh, what really fueled uh, people once upon a time um, and uh, in some ways it became more even artsy at times as well but what i see is a that's a minority almost that's a that's a massive minority is a minority probably who doesn't care about 
a million dollar fundraise or whether the product is used by millions or not. I think that's that's become a, a complete minority. Sure. I find that, I mean, that whole internal fueled aspiration of mastery and meaning is, is kind of going down. The majority aspiration, which I see would be really externally fueled. I mean, hmm. Working for a good brand, a brand that's in the news, a lot of PR coverage, um, great pay, fancy perks, fancy titles, a large team to manage, uh, maybe even waiting for your Tesla and talking about it on Twitter. So, <laughs> um, actually, when I was thinking about it, it just uh, crossed my mind. I mean, the other other aspiration would be that maybe I have five to ten thousand followers on some assorted social media. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember there's something called clout. Yeah. Cloud with a K. Yes, yes, I do. I do. Yeah. Right. There used to be something called the cloud score, and that would calculate how how much cloud you have, etc. But then cloud is dead. I mean, cloud scores are dead as well. But it just crossed my mind that uh, a lot of it is such externally fueled aspiration. Um, but I, I really uh, do hope that I'm wrong about the minority part. That there are many more people out there whose aspirations are driven by the intrinsic search for meaning and mastery. So I think I hope that kind of so. You're sounding too too mm. romantic in a way. <laughs> because even, <laughs> even Kunal Shah said, no, there are these logo collectors. Uh, I think in one of the podcasts which I heard, uh, you're saying that there are these Maybe that what that's what you're pointing towards the minority group. They are mainly like logo collectors. They are not really much concerned about deep diving into the problem statement and then making like a good product, but just working in fancier brands. <laughs> no, I think uh, I would say that's the majority one. Achha, nice, nice. The majority one of the logo collectors, exactly like what you said, mm-hmm. uh, they are hopping from the brand, the more shiny brand to the next shiny brand. And and um, that's what, whereas the other guys are probably more deeply concerned about, I mean, it's it's like a researcher, you know, you just go deep down and you forget that, and you maybe are 10 years, you're doing the same thing and kind of really love doing it. So yeah. you don't really care about whether that's in the news or not. Yeah, yeah, true. But that's a good good point about low collectors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Brian Collins from uh, the graphic design agency Collins, he once wrote a long piece about people confusing fame for mastery. I think, yeah, I, I resonate with you, Jay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely see some of that happening. Right. So actually, if you if you were at the Design Up 2019 event, um, I think I've said this about 20 times already, um, Simon Rabaudengo from Italy, he lives and, and works in, uh, I think, China or used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was talking about how at age of 40, you become an apprentice in Italy. And by the time, if you survive all of that, by the age of 80 or 90, you are acknowledged as a master. It's just because the depth to which you keep going and doing things, um, things move slowly, but very, very surely. So I think, and that's, I think, true for a lot of cultures like either Japan or China, the ancient cultures, kind of where there's a lot of emphasis on craftsmanship and thoughtfulness and all of that. Uh, no, even I'm a big believer of that. The quote I think with Bruce Lee has given, like you you don't need to learn thousand kicks, but just one kick thousand times. So yeah, it, it clearly connects uh, with me as well. Uh, so while we're talking about this, we, we talked about aspirations in general, Jay. Uh, but if I had to ask you to differentiate between, say, the aspirations of young people looking to get in the industry versus more mid-level or senior uh, designers over here, would you see a difference? Do you see a nuance? You know, a difference in aspiration between people who are new and people who've been here for some time? Yeah, I think uh, there is. Uh, I guess the for the people who are new and waiting to get a foothold, I think the aspiration is possibly kind of making an impact with the skills they have and, and kind of shining out there with whatever they do. Then I think much more granular focus, they want to go to the next level and, and keep going. I think there is a lot of hope and a lot of aspiration out there. Uh, what I do see, and this is especially true for design in tech industries, is that as you go to the middle levels or more senior, I think I'm seeing a lot of burnout as well. Um, all these things, whether it's a fancy title or um, or a Tesla or whatever that you want, everything comes at a certain price. And a lot of people are not... Uh, willing or able or shouldn't be even kind of be going there 
to do that because I guess a lot of our, especially Indian startups and Indian companies, don't really have that uh, individual contributor pathway. And everything for growth yep. means that you've got to be a manager, which may not be the right thing to do. Yeah, mm. I that that strikes a chord, Jay. Sorry for interrupting, but right, no, yeah. I think, yeah. But um, please go. On, yeah. So since you brought on that IC versus manager thing. Um, have you noticed uh, this blog that Brian Lovin started a few days back, Staff Talk Design? No, I, I didn't. I didn't, Abhinith. Maybe I think we should probably put that in the uh, in the blog, uh, not blog. I think yeah, the show notes. Show notes. Yeah, show notes. Show box. So, <laughs> right. so he's also interviewing a lot of ICs, and one of the things I was going to talk to you about was brain drain, right? That seems to be happening as as the world gets more global, especially now we are all uh, you know rushing towards being remote. So I've seen this in Indonesia as well, uh, where I talk to some senior design folks and uh, a lot of people would, when they outgrow the companies here, they would take an offer in the Valley or take an offer in Singapore, which is quite close. And I've seen this happen in India as well. Do you have a lament regarding this brain drain? And also, do you think this is just a side effect of, sorry for calling ourselves leaders, but side effect of design leaders uh, quote unquote, being unable to create those IC opportunities within the companies that we work in. Um, I think there are a bunch of I think very interesting question and a lot of strands to this. So very interestingly, Abhinith, when in 2000 when I landed um, a job in Bristol, England, um, after my Mauritius stint, my employers firstly thought that I was a Mauritian, and that's probably where they were kind of like, firstly, where is Mauritius? And I hope that's not Mauritania in Africa, so on and so forth. <laughs> um, so I think the assumption, the, the complete stereotype was that Indians were coders, period. Mm-hmm. And I think Y2K had reinforced that. They just couldn't believe that designers, Indians could be designers in the tech world. I mean, that was like, no, no. Um, and I, I probably was the only Indian designer. I mean, someone who was not from UK or didn't have a half UK kind of lineage or studied in the UK, etc., who was actually working there. I guess it was also the, the the person who hired me was very interesting and was very open with that diversity idea as well in those days. So I think that point of time, if I look back, I was in a tiny, tiny, tiny minority. But um, I mean, it's really makes me glad to see that we are also now seen as being good with design. And I I think this holds true for Asians in general, that, you know, these are not just the tech coders and, you know, guys who work in NASA and all of that, but they can also design and adapt to cultural nuances, really. Mm -hmm. So I think in, I mean, almost... I'm very happy in the, the decade after that I've come back to India. I mean, Indian designer, design and designers have finally gone out to the world and I think they're out there. The only reason I came back to India was that there were super-sized projects to be done at scale right from inception. Mm-hmm. While in the West, I think, um, especially the West, not the Southeast Asia or other places, West, uh, things have been already done. I mean, if you think about airports and infrastructure and, uh, you know, healthcare, etc., there is already a version one and a version two and a version three also maybe that's done. Mm-hmm. So in majority of the cases, you would really be polishing what's done. And I think India is provides that brand new opportunity. And I think India has not disappointed me. So before we jump next, uh, let's take a quick break. Have you ever wondered where the business world is headed? How the ways in which we create, market and sell to consumers will evolve? Or if we'll ever go back to wearing pants while working? For answers to all of this and more, tune into Advertising is Dead with me, Varun Dugirala. Every Tuesday, as I talk to entrepreneurs, leaders and change makers from across business, media, marketing and beyond, you can catch all episodes of Advertising is Dead on the IBM Podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcasts from. All right, uh, so we are back here again. Jay, you spoke about a bit about the brain drain kind of thing. And as Abhinit also spoke about, is it lack of us creating an ecosystem where new talent and, and senior talent can thrive or is it something else? So to extend that thing, whom would you keep or whom would you consider like important 
people or organizations in the entire scheme of things where the talent is growing, right? So we spoke about this uh, uh, offline that uh, how do we, like who's, who's responsible for maintaining the quality of designers, the quantity of designers, and how, what sort of ecosystem we built for them so that they aspire to work in India and solve Indian problems, right? So you have any thoughts around that? Uh, you have also been actively involved in teaching, mentoring, taking workshops. So you have any any thoughts on that? So let me try and split your question in two parts. One is that the whole part of responsible for the talent in India. And second is, I mean, for the talent to just come to come and grow in India, that's one. The second is for getting out of India, maybe. That's the second part of it. I think we have discussed that before, but let's let's go down a little bit more. In terms of responsible for the talent in India, I think there are three big influences. I think parents, schools, and mentors in the job. So uh, very interestingly, while doing the deconstruct research in 2019-20, uh, Ripul Kumar, who was leading the research part, remarked that no parent ever forced their children to get into design. Um, but interestingly, children rejected the so-called safe choices made by their parents and moved from engineering to design. I think um, a silent rebellion in motion, and I'm so glad that they rebelled and chose their own paths. Um, so that is one. I mean, kids saying, you know, I hate engineering or whatever, or BBAs and all of that, and I want to do design. The second, of course, was a bunch of old schools like NID and IIT, IDC, and the rest. And then, of course, newer ones like MIT, Symbiosis, JKLU, NIFT, etc. Um, so I see a lot of good talent, I mean, including some former engineers come out from those places. Um, there is, of course, the rise of the boot camps, but I think it's too early to comment on that. So I'll not comment on that part. Uh, the big one, of course, are mentors in the job. I think they are critical. Um, but... All of these mentors are, of course, within an ecosystem. I mean, the company ecosystem or whatever. Uh, but if there are good mentors in, in good places, then talent really, really blooms. Coming to your second part, which is why are they leaving, given where they came from and where we are right now, I still think a lot of them don't leave. I, I think there is, of course, one part of it which leaves. Now, you could say that one perception is that the best people leave. I don't think so. I think people who leave, of course, leave because they want to try out something very new or very different. Sometimes they get married, they move. So I think all sorts of different things happen. It's it's maybe too naive to say that the best leave and the worst stay. I think that doesn't happen. Conversely, you will also see a lot of um, good people coming back to India um, and in the last three to four to five years as well, uh, which is again, great. I also see a lot of good people not willing to leave India. And the part of the reason is two, three things. I mean, especially when they go to mid-senior kind of uh, positions, they have kids and all, they realize that, um, you know, of course you get paid in dollars and, and pounds and all of that, but your cost of living is also similarly very high. So that's probably one angle that they think about. Uh, the other is, of course, in terms of the kind of breadth and the depth of opportunity here, some of these organizations do offer you something which is very, very uh, unique and very different. So I think there are some people leaving, uh, some people coming back. And I believe a lot of people not going out of India or, or being in the Southeast Asian kind of job market pretty much. Also because the Southeast Asian job market in some ways is similar. I mean, not the same, of course, but in some ways relatable, similar, etc. So I think, again, I would say there's mm. a lot of hope. Mm. Abhinit, you have any take on this about, yeah, I mean, because you have been hiring in that part of the world also. So any observations there? Well, I do think uh, what I agree most strongly with Jay on is I, I do think that the growth in the last four or five years, like the growth in market and, you know, the subsequent change in perception that it has brought along with it, like parents are seeing, and parents are a super important factor. I agree on that as well. Uh, parents are seeing that design is a real career choice for designers. Um, and with all these opportunities in the market, the reasons for leaving Southeast Asia are definitely fewer and fewer. So yeah, like I was nodding throughout what Jay was saying. <laughs> 
And the Thanks. funny thing is, so many people wanting to set up a shop here in India. I mean, that's the other oh, yeah. very interesting one. So yeah, yeah. 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 And Jay, I'll tell you like the number of Indian folks and uh, folks worldwide I'm seeing setting up or wanting to set up shops in Indonesia, for example. Right. Um, that's also very heartening to see. Right? Yep, absolutely. Um, people absolutely. are recognizing that these markets are are going to explode in, in the next decade or so. So I think someone, I think it was, um, mm-hmm. maybe it was Julie Shu who told me that, uh, you know, after all, maybe a third of the world's population lives between India to Indonesia to Malaysia, Philippines, all of that. So I think that's actually both a place for great talent and a great market. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and I would add to that saying great problems also. <laughs> right. Yep. And because, yeah. Very unique. Because it's quite diverse. Yep. Uh, yeah. Very unique problems. And the diversity is so huge that you can't really like lift a model from Valley and just plug it in and it will work, right? So even if the business model is working, there are so many unique challenges across the board from ops to design to tech. Uh, so it's quite fascinating for me. So I, I might come across as in the year, why are you going to leave India? There's so much work in India. But uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, good to know the perspective that yes, some people might leave for different reasons. Fair enough. Uh, cool. I think uh, I'll out of the list. I'll conclude with the last question to Jay mainly, and also if Abhinid you can pitch in. He, uh, what does it take to retain good talent, right? In the organization where you have worked with, in the kind of uh, small, big entrepreneurial gigs that you try, I've seen these days a big trend of ESOPs, right? Uh, just give them and then they are waiting uh, across actually senior to mid or sometimes leadership level, obviously. So. Like, yeah, what, what's your promise uh, you make to your team to retain and, and grow as individuals, grow as designers, and also help the company? Right. I think, um, interesting one. So when I uh, kind of pitch on behalf of Make My Trip and Go Ibibo, I think it's built on some three, four points. One is that uh, we really are a solid multidisciplinary team. So you will get to work with us, learn from us, grow with us. So that's definitely one thing which people like a lot. Um, at least I can tell from the number of people who accept those offers based on that. The second is an org culture. I mean, we went from being fairly ambivalent about design to putting design front and center of our product. So I think that's again a great story from how far design has come and how ingrained it is as a culture within the org itself. I'm mean, not the design culture, but as a part of the org culture. So uh, interestingly, all people who join uh, will have to sit through maybe 90 minutes of me giving them some design gyan and, you know, process and all of that. And that is anybody who joins. So that's the interesting part. Mm. Uh, the third is a chance to see your work in the hands of over 55 million customers. I mean, every month, I mean, and this is probably across Make My Trip and, and Go Ibibo. Um, yeah, and there's a fourth, which is that we are a NASDAQ listed company, which has been around for 21 years. And I can't even remember when we became a unicorn, but which means that this is, of course, pay, but there are real ESOPs. I mean, these are these are real and not a fictional or promissory sort of thing. So, um, of course, now when you think about startups, they can't make certain of these promises or most of these promises, but they do make astronomical hikes at times. Um, but then again, I think the idea really is, um, there's only so much that a hike can take you or kind of, kind of, kind of be sustainable over a period of time. I mean, between us, I'm sure we have seen enough of these companies who have been crazily hiring, been promising a lot, and then they've gone to being very sobering sort of valleys per se. Um, I guess the for a bunch of hiring managers out there or or folks out there who are looking to sort of build their teams, you really have to think about what differentiates you and what's a promise that you can keep. I think that's very, very important, actually. Mm -hmm. But do you think uh, one of the reasons for doing this series was also to be very open about a lot of things which we are facing individually also? So I've seen some really good paymasters uh, so they retain talent uh, just through good salaries, right? And unfortunately, sometimes they land up in outgrowing themselves and then 
it's neither a IC role, uh, neither they can manage stuff. You know what I mean, right? You must have yep. seen those sort of people uh, in the industry. So what's what's your take on that? I mean, is it a good culture that we are building as design community? Yeah, I think that's not a, a good culture, really, to be honest uh, with you. I think when I look at, and we've, we've seen a lot of these, I mean, people go through kind of sudden jumps, astronomical hikes, uh, retention bonus, you name it and they get it. But eventually, I think, I mean, when a company goes down or, or the career stagnates, eventually the individual loses. I think that's probably the sad part of it. And uh, when designers or design leaders within this org are making that call, I think they have to think from a much more systemic perspective that how will this play out in the next three to four to five years? Because at some point of time, they might be at a point where they are unaffordable as well. And I think it's good to get there gradually as getting there in the first five or six or seven years of your career you've got like 30, 40 year career up ahead. So if you become unaffordable at eight years, what will you do with your rest of your 22 or mm-hmm. 25 years? I think that's that's actually a scary thought. Mm-hmm. I think the, the scariest thought for designers these days is that careers are 30 years long because most people dream that exactly. they retire. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. And then you go to another 45 or 50 and that's actually like a in my mind, a fairly scary thought. <laughs> yes. But I, I don't think, uh, like, even when I was young, uh, a young designer, uh, I, I never imagined myself being a designer at 50. It just fell too far away. So I think all of us, it's like stock markets. All of us are, you know, we can we are good at thinking short term. We want short term returns. Um, and even though everybody will end up at the same place, if you zoom out and look at 20 years, but people are just... It, it's not intuitive for people to think of careers in such decade long terms. Yep. Correct. correct. And, and I have a different perspective to that is that uh, like because of my career shift in the last uh, four, five years, I've fortunate to work in places where they were setups, like big, big setups, right? So as in not as big as Microsoft, but whatever, uh, they were established companies. And when you see the, the breadth of marketing, the ops, the logistics, um, and bunch of other things, uh, you are just one more department like probably the HR or whatever, right? Uh, important, but you are just one of them. Now, how can one justify those sort of salaries uh, or those sort of, uh, I mean, and, and justify in a sense that you you bring, you have to bring that much to the table, right? So do you think that design does? Uh, and then that's why these people are demanding or they're looking forward or they have those sort of aspirations? No, I think this is a great question again. I think from a, the problem is that when we think in terms of trends opposed to value, I think there is a mismatch. Uh, a trend will last for a certain amount. I mean, it may last for six months, year, two years, three years. And, uh, but eventually someone will ask for what are the value that you are contributing? What's the value your department is actually giving? And I mean, the great part is that we are now part of much, much larger corporations than ever before. But if I look at it, some of the winners really are the small boutique studio owners who might just kind of cash out in the 50s pretty much. And um, so this, there is that because they have actually shown the value of their small 30, 40, 50 people companies per se. But if you think about 30, 40 or 50 people or 100 people studio within, I think it gets even more complicated. I mean, the ROI of design starts to come into question and therefore the ROI of individuals and this whole angle which a large corporation will have, which is that, uh, you know, no one is indispensable and that's the truth to a great extent, actually. Mm. Sorry, I went around a little bit in circles there, but (laughs) some odd thoughts there. Yeah. No, that's perfectly fine. (laughs) Cool. Actually, Abhinit, you also come from a studio, this thing. and I was, I, I thought it would sound like a self-plug, but I, I related so hard. Right. Uh, no, you have, have yeah, more yeah. to share, Abhinit? And, I mean, from your, from your left shift. No, I, I do think uh, what Jay has said makes a lot of sense. My, my perspective has changed complete 180 degree, right? Um, after actually witnessing scale and... I have felt what you felt, Kedar, which is, yeah, like I think John Maida got into some trouble for saying this, 
like design is a support function mm. right um and i think daniel burka also uh, shared some thoughts on twitter the other day where like is like design is too infatuated with getting on the table and it doesn't know what it will do when it gets to the table right so i i i felt all of those things and i do think that to some extent the market also has to you know show and you know show that design is a differentiator for them when they make the the consumers make the choice of picking a product um and that's something i think southeast asia will see in the next decade but i can't say that customers are the market is voting for you know design being the differentiator yet and that's when as jay said true value will be created yeah, true, true. in fact um, i was talking with someone the other day that if you compare there are probably i don't know 300 universities in maharashtra alone for engineering so if we i don't know the numbers but maybe 1000 engineering colleges and universities across india and probably 10 or 15 design schools so the the supply is low and the demand is high doesn't mean that you will get paid uh, the way you are right you you need to bring that value it just right now the demand supply kind of a thing which is uh, working for designers at the moment well, is it a fair uh, 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 perspective uh, kedar i think um, we were doing this thing again for the deconstruct research as well and it yeah. seems that number of schools have like grown like crazy oh is it oh. yeah yeah i think there might be for all you know i think shiva had that number somewhere he was saying there are just 300 schools in bangalore alone and this is not counting the boot camps like the 10k designers and um, whatever kind of design something all of those uh, there is it's just mushroom part of it is in in let's say triple it or lots of these uh, tech schools mm. which are bringing in design and uh, they also want to have now nids are mushroomed uh, there are i don't know do you don't even know how many nids are there iits are teaching design everywhere yep others uh, in masters in communication design or visual design at iit hyderabad which is very interesting because i thought why visual design kind of in my mind so i think there might be a few thousand schools actually in in design wow. which again is that it's imperative for the good ones to rise and shine mm-hmm. but you think uh, matlab it's almost closing to uh, the engineering and and also mind you engineering are sort of established right so i'm not comparing a small boutique teaching class or like someone in in bangalore versus a right. iit idc center right yeah. so idc iit these nids are hand picked like yeah. they are like limited right so i'm not comparing those but in terms of the big design schools there's still lot of disparity right that's right but i think um, what will also happen is that in something like a lovely professional university in punjab which is probably known for its business and tech and other courses now there's a design course as well hmm. so that's actually kind of and yeah it's kind of out there in huge numbers the other th- question which boggles my mind is who's teaching <laughs> yeah <laughs> correct correct yeah hopefully audio gain yeah let's see <laughs> <laughs> cool Uh, so Jay, I want to conclude, uh, which is like especially for you, is that you started uh, doing some good work, uh, uh, showcased at Design Up, and uh, as in like Design Up is something which uh, is one of the sought after conferences. Also, have you seen any talent improvement, or uh, you have any metrics to measure that? Uh, because you have you have been very like a Im- important contributor to. to just educate to evangelize design at a larger scale right so any any insights from your conference and how is it helping anything worth knowing right i hope so that i'm trying to evangelize but so i think interesting questions let me just break it down into one or two parts i think what happens is while curating design up what we try and showcase work that has a very broad um, scope scale and a human story attached to it um i think what we try and bring is is also diversity of people of projects of outcomes and the idea really if i think about it is to provide alternate role models not just the one that you hear or see on social media primarily driven by fundraise or pr or titles and team sizes etc so very interestingly there are two 
kind of metrics part to it. So one is that I very often hear people, and this includes even our own volunteers, um, that they say that in this edition or workshop um, or this particular speaker that changed my life, that challenged me to think differently, or they made me switch roles or paths. And the, the ROI for many of them is the reassurance. And for some of them, it's all about the reinvention or rethinking part. But if you think about the real matrix in a slightly of the main path, maybe is that they are the individual stories which in some ways translate into DesignUp's own growth. So I think when I look at it, it's, it's kind of doubled year on year till, of course, pandemic struck and we said, let's pause it for the moment. And the other part is like employees from now over 300 companies attended the 2019th edition, the fourth edition. And this is by most standards, we are a very, very young conference. Uh, but what I love is the diversity of companies. I mean, you will have a small startup from Ujjain to Google. You will have ClearTrip and Make My Trip, Amazon and Flipkart. They're all united by learning, inspiration, and the love of design. So I think in some ways, I hope that is making some difference on the ground. And people are seeing beyond and finding newer role models, probably that's the way of Maybe. talking about it. Cool. Uh, I think I'm uh, done with the questions. I, 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 it's been really a pleasure uh, to uh, know so many things from you. Abhinit, you want to add or uh, ask anything um, as a concluding thought? No, thanks a lot, Jay, for taking out the time. And thank you for being patient with us running over time a bit. And no worries at all. I, I hope our listeners will be patient. <laughs> but it, it's always a great pleasure talking with both of you. And I think it's a bonus having you as well uh, with, with Kedar. So great. I really enjoyed our conversation. And sorry if I went a little overboard on some of these. No, no, no. We, we absolutely enjoyed it. And and frankly, it's it's not about... Um, because with AudioGAN, I've, I've seen there are like very interesting feedback I'm getting from... YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. And, and it's quite heartening to see uh, the kind of things which come across. Uh, and, and hopefully the younger generation who wants to get into design learns a lot from this series over a period of time. And uh, yeah, thanks, Jay. Uh, so on, on a concluding note, I'll say that uh, thanks for listening till the end. Uh, currently, I'm heading the design at Jupiter.money and we are hiring at all levels. So you can visit jupiter.money slash careers. Uh, you can follow AudioGAN on Instagram at AudioGAN Moments or visit audiogan.com. Uh, you guys want to plug anything? You guys are hiring. Uh, I'm sure Gojek is hiring all around the year uh, at all levels. So any, any, any of you want to have a plug, feel free. Jay, you go first. You're the guest. <laughs> yeah, we are hiring, uh, of course. Uh, but I think I also want to say that... Um, what a fantastic journey AudioGAN has been. And I think it's a labor of love from Kedar. So do keep listening, do keep recommending, and do keep sharing whatever your Gyan is. Thank you. I think as Indians, we, we consume a lot, but I think we should also share a lot more. So I think that'll be fantastic. And I'll just double plug in AudioGAN on AudioGAN. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but about uh, Make My Trip and uh, Go Abibu, like uh, you guys are hiring right yeah, now? Yeah, we are hiring. We are always hiring. So there is, uh, yeah, we would love to hear from you at any point in time. Just follow us on any of the social media channels. And the same goes for Design Up. And hopefully we'll be back with something exciting soon. You will hear it first, maybe on AudioGAN itself. Wow, that's great. that's great. In fact, that was one of the questions. I missed it. So any any plans this year? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are actually. There is um, some pretty exciting stuff in the pipeline, but maybe not yet uh, ready to be shared because it's, it's work in progress. But yeah, very soon. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Abhinit? Yep, uh, we at Gojek are hiring as well. Uh, all of you listeners, mm -hmm. if anyone is interested, you can go to gojek.com slash career. And yeah, you'll find positions across Southeast Asia there. And Kedar, thanks a lot. I've been a listener of this podcast for a really long time as well. It's really a privilege to be a co-host on this. And I had a really fun time. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Abhinit. Thanks, Kedar. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. And that's it from today's GAN session. For show notes and more GAN, visit audiogan.com. If you like this podcast, 
please don't forget to check our other interesting podcast on IVM network you can listen to us on IVM podcast app ivmpodcast.com or any of your favorite podcasting apps to stay tuned follow us on twitter and instagram at ivm podcast and if you wish to connect with me i am at audiogan moments on instagram until then take care Eventually, you'll see the end of your childhood. Get accustomed to womanhood. Enjoy the experience of sisterhood. Might get to wifehood or not. Choose motherhood or not. You learn to define your personhood. Earn a livelihood. Change the neighborhood and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy. So join me, Ritasha, and me, Ayushi, on a journey from station starting point to station um what now? Next station. Odin station and hopefully Agla station adulthood fresh episodes out every thursday do you wonder why china does the things that it does or want to know how we could improve online privacy or perhaps you're thinking about how we can kickstart india's economy if you'd like to search for the answers to such questions check out all things policy a daily public policy podcast that covers everything from employment figures to aircraft carriers Tune in from Monday to Friday for new episodes and fresh takes.